Greetings, folks! Dunman here, and welcome back to everything we know about Alex's Caves. Now, I'm doing this video because last time I put up a poll asking what video you wanted, and you guys chose Forlorn Hallows, so that's the one we're doing today. So today we're not quite finishing up this series, but we are doing the last biome. There'll be one more video about which I'll talk at the end of this video. So let's jump right into it. The Glow Moth, or the Glue Moth, I know. If M-O-O -O is Moo is G-L-O-O -O Glue, I, I know. It's a passive mob that flies around in the Forlorn Hallows and it kind of glows in the dark. You're quickly gonna realize that this thing is like the only nice thing that's down there. Everything else is just some sort of monster, so appreciate it while you can. But the Forlorn Hallows won't even let this little thing be itself. Because the Underzealots, I'll talk about them in a minute, do a weird ritual to turn the glow moth into some sort of monster with a moth face that attacks you and jumps at you from the darkness and it has this creepy power where you like shift into its mind and like you can see through its eyes while it attacks you. Yeah, this thing is nuts. The Underzealots are the people that live down here. They are like a race of mole dwarf things that practice like a weird cult magic thing. They break torches, they burrow underground, and they only fight you when you're near them because they are nearsighted, which is at least something that they're weak at. The Corrodent is awful. It is a giant rat with huge teeth that again burrows into the ground. They jump out of the ground to attack you, but there is a very simple way of keeping them away. They are deathly afraid of light, like they will literally cower away from a torch. So make sure your area is well lit so that you don't have to deal with these guys. Vespar are giant bats. They're generally not a problem, but if you walk under them while they're doing the whole upside down thing, they will attack you frantically and just go all crazy on you. But there is a way of grounding them. If they bash into you and you have a shield up, then they will just like fall to the ground and you can beat them up. Now let's move on to the boss fight in this biome. The Vespar can also be subjected to the crazy experiments that the Underzealots do. The same way they turn glow moths into the Watchers, they can turn the Vespar into a big giant monster bat called the Forsaken. Now the Forsaken is insane. This thing has a bunch of health, it can do a bunch of damage, and it is in just in general like crazy boss fight. It's got both ranged and melee attacks and some of the best animations I've ever seen from any Minecraft mod. Pick you up and smash you into the ground and I've also seen it fight a warden. So yeah, watch out. When the full trailer for this biome came out, we also saw a bunch of different stuff that isn't named. Like these blocks with eyes looking at you, like these red eyes. We also saw statue-like blocks and structures and something that looks kind of like an ancient city. Mothballs have been added so you can keep the glow moths away, which I don't know why you'd want. Like, they're the only nice thing that's down there. I mean, you push them into the darkness, an underzealot holds on to one of them, tears into it, now it's a demon. And now you have pro- keep the glow moths with you, keep the stupid rats away. <laughs> You can also craft the Beholder, which I think would be a game-changing item in multiplayer. They're basically security cameras crafted using drops from the Watchers and the Underzealots. They run on occult gems, which basically turn into like little control panels that you can keep in your inventory, and you can activate and see through the Beholder's eyes and look around wherever you've placed it. As long as you are in the same dimension, you can look at whatever the Beholder is looking at from anywhere in the world. There are also pieces of armor called Cloak and Hood of Darkness, which are amazing. They charge up if you're wearing them in the dark, and if you're in the dark, you can basically fly around using them. So yeah, they're gonna be very useful since most of the underground that you're gonna be exploring is going to be dark. So yeah, you can just zoom around down there using these. There's also an item called the Totem of Possession, which helps you take control of non-powerful mobs. I'm assuming that means you can control like the Warden or the Wither or the Ender Dragon and those kind of guys. But yeah, anything that's not those, you can basically turn into your puppet to fight for you. The Desolate Dagger is an interesting weapon. It doesn't do that much damage, but once you smack someone with it, it summons another like space dagger that also stabs them. 
So the more times you stab them, the more daggers happen and the more times they get stabbed. It's absolutely overkill. Remember the Corrodents? Yeah, those guys have some pretty useful drops. They drop their teeth, using which you can either make haste potions, which in itself is insane, but you can also make something called the Burrowing Arrows, which are like automated drills, basically. You make one of these, you shoot it at the wall, and it just starts breaking blocks. Just starts biting into them. It can break five blocks in a row, and they'll just it'll drop down and become an item again. But can you imagine doing that with like an infinity bow? I wonder if you can do that with like multi-shot. This makes mining so much easier and so much more fun. You're just shooting the caves. The dread bow is another awesome weapon that the mod adds in, which again, like the crazy dagger we saw before, has insane magic powers. When you shoot something, more arrows will rain down on it from out of nowhere. And that, guys, is everything we know about the Forlorn Hallows. You know what, let me talk about the, the sixth video. I, I think I've hyped it up a little too much. What it is, is essentially, I have information. I have collected information on a little tutorial that the creator has given us about how to find these caves and how to track them down and explore them. And that video is going to be that, basically how to make maps and how to do cartography. I know, super exciting subject matter. So I think that will be the most useful video that I've made. And yeah, guys, now we just play the waiting game. And I don't know, man, I can't wait. This is going to be super fun. When it comes out, I have so many ideas. And I'm also opening up the base of ideas to you guys. What do you guys want me to do with it? Because like 100 days with Alex's Caves seems like an obvious one. Like if the creator updates Ice and Fire and Rats, that would be crazy. It'd be, it'd be like the greatest survival ever, ever played. Okay, because Alex's Mobs is already in the version where Alex's Caves is going to come out. So just please get Ice and Fire up to date, man. Please, please we beg. Lord Alexander Mobiles. Yeah, man, besides that, I just want to thank you guys so much on the support on the channel. You guys don't know the behind the scenes, okay? The views have been crazy lately. Like, I've been uploading more shorts, people have been watching those, I've been getting, like, way more comments than usual. It's like, like, I feel the growth, I feel the power surging through my veins. Okay, it's insane. It's it's crazy. Hit subscribe, okay? We want to get to 10,000 subscribers as soon as possible. And also, I want you guys to begin work on whatever you want when I hit 10,000 subscribers. Okay, what do you guys want? And I might do like a weird, like a poll thing where I give a bunch of options and I eliminate one option every round to see what I have to do when I hit 10,000 subscribers. So yeah, I am looking forward to that. Yeah, on that note, guys, I hope you've liked, I hope you've commented, and I hope you've subscribed. And on that note, goodbye.